One of the first questions you're going to ask when you get into CNC is, what CAD and CAM software should I use? And there's a lot of options out there. I'm not familiar with all of them, but I am pretty familiar with Fusion 360. I had been using the free personal license for years for 3D printing before I got into CNC, so for me that was a really natural transition. The only thing I really had to learn was how to do the CAM portion, which is really you know, fairly straightforward. So um, I want to give you kind of an overview today of what the licensing options are and some very basic functionality overview so you can try to understand, hey, is this worth looking into for me or not? Now, a lot of people think that Fusion 360 is a commercial product with paid versions only, and that's not the case. Uh, when I started with it uh, you know, years ago, the, the free personal license was fully featured and not handicapped at all, and it was awesome. Uh, you know, I, I wish I'd gotten into CNC at that time. But uh, there have since been some restrictions put on the, the personal license, and I'll touch on those in just a bit. What I want to go through first, though, is a nearly free version that's going to be useful for a lot of you out there who have small hobby businesses. And that's the startup license for Fusion 360. Now, this is good for folks who have small startup businesses. They're making less than $100,000 a year and it is a fully featured license. It used to be free, but it is now, over the last year, I think they've been starting to charge for it, but it is inexpensive. It is only $150 per person for th three years. So you're basically getting, uh, for $50 a year, if you're a one-person business, that's all you got, and you have a fully licensed, fully function functional copy of Fusion 360 that you can use. And that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, my business is still very small. It's basically just me. I'm definitely the only one using Fusion 360. I do have a little help from a high schooler here over the summer, but, um, but I'm the only one right now doing Fusion 360. So for me, it's very inexpensive to use Fusion 360 for startups. And um, this might be something that works well for you. Now, um, there is one restriction here. Well, it's not a restriction. The, the one issue for me, uh, not a restriction, but an issue, is that I like to use the rotary from time to time. And the rotary functionality is not included in the base license for Fusion 360. It's not a restriction specific to startups. Fusion uses what they call extensions. And, um, and I'll kind of show you here, maybe. Um, you can come up here to extensions and you can click on the various extensions you want. So the manufacturing extension is the one that includes, among other things, the rotary functionality, the, the fourth axis, fifth axis, um, some other advanced functions that, frankly, I don't really need at all. The only thing I really need out of this is the rotary, and it can be pretty expensive. So um, I'll show you what that looks like here. Um, you can buy it for three years, I don't know if anyone's gonna do that, but let's just say for a one-year license for 1465. Now that's pretty expensive. The good news is this is negotiable, at least that's been my experience. I start, I, I uh, enabled the, the, the extension to play around with it, and uh, there's a 14-day or a 30-day free trial, I forget which it is, and very soon after that, I got uh, contacted by someone on the sales team, and they, were able to offer me a discount on this price. Now, I don't really use it that often. I use it from time to time, but I don't use it every day, so I wouldn't wanna pay even the discounted price that they offered me. But let's say you had a project you were gonna work on for a while, you might find it's better to license it by the month. And right now that's going for $185 a month. And let's say, hey, that's too much. You don't even really need it for a whole month. You'd like to pay less if that's a possibility. They have a thing called these flex tokens so you can buy tokens uh, in various quantities. At the lowest quantities are $3 a token. It takes 10 tokens to license the manufacturing extension for one day. So for $30, you can use it for a day. Now, you probably wouldn't wanna do that for a month or for a year, because be, you'd be paying a lot more than what you'd pay if you use the other license types. But if you just want to, for example, create the tool paths for a, a set of chess pieces, like one of, the, one of the first things I did, you might just want to use it for a day or a couple days, get that working the way you want to, pay you know, 30, 60 bucks, something along those lines for depending on how many days it takes you, and then stop licensing it 
and then just use that model over and over those tool paths you can cut them as many times as you want and you don't have to have the license when you're cutting on the machine you just have to have a license when you're creating the tool paths so uh, that's a possibility that probably works for a lot of folks that makes the rotary tool paths not too expensive and um, you know this is the one thing I like I said that that I really wanted out of the manufacturing extension there are some other things you might find useful but they're not all things you really need to pay that big fee for Fusion 360 also has a thing they call uh, scripts and add-ons and it's kind of like the app store for um, for uh, for Fusion 360 sort of I guess that's one way to think about it and you can in there uh, buy or license on a, on a subscription basis many different plugins that allow you to do many different things and some of those things actually do some of the things that are in the manufacturing extension um, so uh, those are provided by third-party providers they do all sorts of stuff you can browse through that and see which which features you want and which features really you aren't you're interested in and um, and that I guess pretty much does it for the for the startup license so the next license type that's going to apply to a lot of folks in the hobby CNC market is the free personal license and while it is still available and it is still free it is not still fully featured there are a few restrictions that you need to be aware of and uh, sometimes you know depending on what you do they're not going to be very impactful but for some of us they would they would be pretty impactful so I'll try to go through that here um, as well and I'll include the links here for downloading each of these different license types in the description so you can just click right to them but the the personal license is available for free for um, for anyone using it for non-commercial purposes and it is handicapped so you don't get all the functionality and I'll kind of touch on the things I think are important there now uh, there are also some other license types that I'll touch on real quick I won't I won't dive into them but there's an educational version there's a student version and then if you just want to buy the regular one it is $680 a year or $85 a month and that's the regular commercial license so even if you had to license it as a full-fledged you know medium sized small medium sized business it's still not that much that you know not that much right $680 a year if you're a viable business you can you can probably swallow that but um, let's say you want to go down the path of free which is great a lot of us like free so let's go through the feature restrictions in the personal license now there's a number of them and I'll, I'll touch on the ones I think are important and and um, and some of the ones that maybe sound scary but aren't very important at all in my opinion um, the, the first one is you can't export all file types you can export STLs and you can ex export DXF drawings and you can export step files but some of the more advanced file types you cannot export now if you're 3d printing or doing CNC those are going to be probably the main things you want to use steps STLs and DXF I don't know if you're going to need a lot of other a lot of other file types so that's probably not that big of a deal for most of us another one which can be a big pain in the neck uh, for me this is a you know this would be a big pain in the neck and I, I lived with the personal version for a little while before I went to the startup license so I had to feel this pain but you're limited to only 10 editable projects at a time so what that means is if you have 10 open projects that are you're, you're doing different you're doing work in in different places you know kind of concurrently or you know within a span of time before you can open well before you can edit the 11th you can open the 11th but you can't edit the 11th until you mark one of the other ones uneditable so if you have a lot of projects open at the same time that you're working on that can be a pain in the neck to have to decide which one to disable every time you want to open up a new one if you're not doing a bunch of projects all at the same time then it might not be a big deal right if you just start one thing finish it in a single project and then move, make it non-editable and move on that's a piece of cake but if you have lots of different parts open from different projects at, at the same time it becomes quite a hassle to have to manage which ones you can edit so that's that can be a big one it's definitely not a it's not a functionality thing so much like you're not restricted to the feature but it's a pain in the neck to manage 
and you know that could be enough to drive you to spend the six hundred eighty dollars depending on how you operate so that's one another one that is really big for people who have automatic tool changers is you cannot export multiple tool in C programs you can except you can export multiple tool paths for a same tool but you can't do tool changes not with the post processor so you could export each tool separately and then do some manual editing or some scripting to combine them all back together after the fact and then go run that as one job on the CNC but that's not going to give you you know seamless post processing of multi tool tool paths and and uh, and let you use your tool changer effort effortlessly so that's that's a that can be a pain in the neck I mean you can get around it if you're handy scripting or if you want to do some manual editing of the those files but um, that could be a big a big problem uh, might drive you to the commercial license um, let's see another one that's big no access to the uh, to the extensions so that means you can't access you can't even buy the license for the rotary you just can't do it the manufacturing manufacturing extension is not compatible with the personal license and that could be a bummer if you wanted to go down that path you just you would have to upgrade to um, to a paid release um, you can also not use a range uh, to lay out your pieces that you want to cut on say a, a single piece of plywood for example uh, you got a you got a project you're cutting it out of some sheet goods and you want to lay them all out in the most efficient way fusion can do that but not in the personal license that's a feature that's restricted now the good news there is you can buy some add-ons it'll do that for you for next to nothing so that's like a couple bucks and you're back in business worked around that problem but um, that's the that's the things I think are really important in the uh, in the set of limitations for CNC users of the uh, the personal version so if those don't bother you then you know if you don't have a rotary and you don't have a uh, tool changer you know this could be a really viable option for you to get a free CAD CAM package that's really powerful and uh, I'll kind of I'll just also go through real quickly what what is some of the main functions in in fusion so you can kind of see what is it what is it capable of now for the most part I spend my time in the design tab I'm this is where I'm building things and uh, it supports lots of different types of design I sh maybe is the right way to say it uh, you can design solids you can do surface modeling you can do edit meshes uh, you can do sheet metal you can do plastics I do a little bit of solid surfaces and mesh I don't really do sheet metal or plastic 99% uh, of my time in, in the CAD design tab here is all modeling solids uh, once in a while I use the surface once in a while I use mesh but really hardly at all now you can model just about anything here you know this is a simple solitaire game that that uh, that I had modeled and uh, I maybe showed this off in one of the other videos but you can do more advanced multi-part things as well and I am you know this is one where you know this ATC dust boot called the sidekick it uh, lots of parts some of them are parts that I actually imported from McMaster car or some of them are parts I imported from other projects but it's you know, got lots of parts and it's a fully featured design um, and a, you know all built here in in fusion um, and actually exclusively in the design tab I didn't or in, in the solids portion of the design tab I didn't have to use any of the other stuff now um, you can also go to the manufacturing tab and if you're doing CNC work this is probably the place you're going to spend the next amount of time and that is uh, to come in here and to cut the tool paths and one of the cool things it has is a simulation and I'll just I'll show you that I might speed this up and I can speed it up a couple different ways but I'll probably speed it about up in the playback just so it plays smoothly um, so I'll just click this I got the whole all my tool paths all my tools selected and I'm gonna simulate this I'll just click the play button 
and you can see how Fusion shows me what it's expecting to do and so I have a clear understanding and I can tell it to stop on collision so if I have a collision where you know the the collet nut ran into the stock or I made a rapid movement to lower the tool into the material it would stop and tell me so before I exported it and ran it on the CNC and had a big problem so uh, you can see it's just you know doing some roughing passes now it's working on the finishing pass here or a finishing pass for this portion of the of the you know kind of the the marble tray for this solitaire board and when it gets done with this it's going to try to cut the the contour around the outside and it's going to leave tabs so that it stays stuck to the stock that I have clamped to the table um, as well and I think the very last thing it's going to try to do is is uh, a finishing contour around that outside lip if I remember right but we'll see what happens here yeah it looks like it's going down it's taking that little that outside edge here and just kind of rounding that down for me so that's kind of what that looks like in the in the simulation tab that's just part of manufacturing it's not a separate thing at all um, so that's just you know what you get and that works with rotary as well which is super handy so um, no, next place I spend some time is in render and here you can define what the environment and what the what the lighting looks like and then you can do more advanced I should have maybe pulled in a more sexy picture here but uh, I can then render it and it will do a high quality render with all the light effects and and uh, reflections and everything else in the scene as well and I can set the quality and tell how how, how high a quality I want to get that that image but this is good if you're doing like product images or prototype images you want to share with a customer something along those lines so those are the three that I spend my time in you can also do generative generative design this is something like for 3d printing um, you could actually do your supports inside fusion 360 if you wanted to you can do animations I've done a little bit of animation but hardly at all and then you can do simulate simulations and this is not like cam simulation where you want to simulate the cut but where you want to uh, see the effective forces put on the material and you know when things will bend or break or those kinds of things and then you can also do drawings and this is handy if you're wanting to share the critical dimensions to an outside party to cut something for you or if you're sharing um, maybe drawings back and forth with a customer to verify that the dimensions that they're verbally sharing with you um, are reflected properly in the design overall so a um, lot of a lot of capability you can do all this stuff in the same place um, and there's actually an electronics component to fusion 360 as well where you can design the, the circuits and circuit board layouts as well for on the pcbs so i haven't touched that at all um, but maybe i'll get into that at some point overall i think it's a super powerful package um, if the limitations of you know the various license types don't bother you, you know maybe maybe startup license is great and and uh, you know if, if you're a maybe the personal license is great if the limitations don't bother you, and if if they do and you're a small enough business, the startup license is probably a really good deal. And if you're actually a bigger business, you can probably afford 680 bucks a year to use this if you decided it was the right thing for you. So I'm not going to make that call for you. You make the call for yourself. But this is just a quick, quick demo, and and I'll try to follow this up with some more in-depth tutorials as time goes by. That does it for today. Thank you.